Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, if you get anything out of it, please share it, like it, comment, whatever. And uh, check me out on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back. Uh, thanks again to DSR Farms for making this video possible. Um, we're going to do some hamburgers because, like, it's almost summertime and Memorial Day's coming up and grilling and stuff. But I'm not grilling because it's been raining all day. So I'm going to do everything on a skillet, but it'll transpose to a grilled just fine. Um, first, well I guess grilled onions probably won't, but everything else, I guess you can put the skillet on the grill. Everything else will transpose fine. I've got some onions I've just diced up, um, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch square-ish, and I've just got a little bit of bacon grease in the skillet that I've got hot, and hopefully it'll sound like, yeah. And we're going to caramelize these, which typically would mean that I'm going to get them kind of translucent and then cook them on low for like two hours. That's not what I'm going to do. As soon as they start going translucent, I've got just a little bit of uh, baking soda right here. My mind went blank for a second. Like maybe a quarter teaspoon that I'm going to throw in there. When I do, I'll show you what happens. It's, re it's really cool. Changing colors a little bit. Probably been two or three minutes and I'm gonna put this on whoop, yep there it went and just mix that in I'm not exactly sure what's actually happening here but it starts bubbling just a little bit kinda of like when you put baking soda in vinegar so I don't know if it's pulling some of the acid out of these but uh, they start to thicken up just a little bit almost like a gravy it's not what it is but at any rate, they start changing colors like super fast, like you can get caramelized onions this way in 10 minutes instead of 3 hours. That's pretty cool. So those took like another 2, maybe 3 minutes. There's still a little residual heat in that skillet. But uh, as you can see, I mean, they just cook way down again. I don't know the science behind that, but it works, so I do it. Um, and then, typically, um, I cook with a lot of deer meat, so I'm trying to mask the flavor of the deer. There's a little wild taste to it. But uh, since I've got this grass-fed ground beef here, I'm going to let it do most of the talking. And these onions are just going to accent that. They're not really going to cover it up. Typically, when I'm take, you know, this is probably a half of an onion, or, I don't know, somewhere in there. And I'm just going to mix that into it really well. And I'm not putting any... Any sauce or seasoning or anything in it other than this onion right now and I'm just gonna mix this up and uh, ladies out there I don't know if you noticed this or not I'm not wearing a wedding ring but I am happily married I just took it off to mix in all the thank you baby um, <laughs> to uh, mix this up so I didn't get meat up under my ring and stuff um, typically when people make their own hamburger patties there's a couple of issues and I'm gonna try and address most of those issues First of all, they wind up with inconsistently sized hamburger patties. So what I've got here, I'm going to do third pound um, burgers. And I've got it basically evenly placed in there. And I'm just going to make like a peace sign type deal and segment this into three relatively even pieces. If you were doing quarter pounders, obviously, you could just make it into four or half pounds. You could just cut it in half. Um, so I'm just going to grab one of those sections, and I'm not going to worry about rolling it up or anything, but I've got um, a cake plate. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but you know when you go to like birthday parties and you don't, not the plate you eat pizza and stuff on, but like cupcakes and cake, that kind of plate. And it's rimmed on the edge right here, and I'm just going to pat it flat in here all the way to the edge. And you may be saying to yourself, that's going to be a huge hamburger patty and you're right it would be a huge hamburger patty um, and I have found that like it's it winds up cooking down to about the size of a piece of loaf bread so if you're doing patty melt you could leave it just like this but since I'm doing hamburgers I'm gonna run my fingers all the way around the edge just evenly just where they touch the rim and the meat and that'll give me about a half inch less all the way around and that'll solve another issue that people have with hamburger patties is they typically mound up in the middle and then get really thin on the edge but since I'm doing this in this manner uh, the edges are actually bigger and thicker than the center. It's just like a steak 
And uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and some black pepper and a little bit of garlic powder on here on this side. And then I'm going to flip it down in the skillet, which you could do this on the grill. And then peel that plate away. And then I'll season this side the same way. Now, um, another thing that people wind up doing is they cook on too hot of a grill or a skillet. And you wind up with either overdone and underdone at the same time or completely overdone. Or the doneness of the burger is terrible. That's what I'm trying to get at. So what we're going to do is look at the side of this. And when it starts to get gray about halfway up, we're going to flip this over. And it starts the way between low and medium. Um, so it's not, it's not like we're searing it. It's not like a steak. You're cooking this burger. And we'll uh, let that get up and we'll flip it and we'll talk a little bit more. About gray halfway up or so. And we're going to flip this over and look at it. And now what we're looking for is the juice to start coming back out of the top. And as soon as it does that, I'm going to flip it again. And I'm going to do that on this side, flip it, let it go on that side, flip it, and let it come back. And when it comes back that fourth time, down, over, down, over, and then it's done. I don't know how, however you want to count that, but that'll be done. All right, while those burgers are cooking, um, I've got some potatoes sliced up right here. And what I did, um, I actually baked these in the microwave. I've got a video on how I did this, and I'm not going to get super in-depth into it. But I baked these in the microwave for about five or six minutes, and then I sliced them up, and I'm going to fry them. And what you wind up with, if you've ever tried to make french fries before, and you just cut up raw potatoes and put them in the oil, they, they weren't good. I, I know that they weren't good. Don't lie to me. So what this is like, um, I don't know if you've heard of this or you haven't, but they do a thing called twice fried potatoes. And that is you cook the potatoes and then you take the potatoes out, you let the oil get back up to temperature and you cook them again and you get a crispy French fry. Well, since I've already cooked these in the microwave and sliced them, I've only got to fry them once. And so it's like baked fried potatoes and uh, you get crispy potatoes this way. Alright, so just finished this last one here. These two came off before, and like I said, I'm treating them just like steak, so I'm not going to cut into that, even though it looks super juicy, because if I do, it's going to be all dried out and stuff. This is the first one I did, and you know what they say, the first one's the worst one. Okay, so I've just got a little barbecue sauce and some mayonnaise on these toasted buns, and got that on there. Going to throw a little bit of pepper jack cheese on there, and I've got some dill relish, because in the pickle world, if it ain't dill, it ain't real. So we're going to put that on there and then top it off with this bun. Uh, French fries, uh, they came out and I just put some chili pepper, I'm sorry, chili powder and uh, salt and garlic powder on those. Toss them around a little bit. And we'll see if I can slice through this. Put a little working with here. Oh yeah, that's, I mean, just what you're looking for in doneness on a burger um, and I'm fixing to devour that. Another tip, if you do screw up one side, uh, neither of these are that way, this is going to be super hot. If you do screw up one side and you don't want anybody to see it, just put a piece of cheese on it and let it melt over it. They'll never know. Um, that's all I've got though. Uh, again, thanks to DSR Farms for this uh, grass-fed beef. Looks awesome, smells awesome. I'm fixing to tear into it.